Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a fascinating problem for you all today. Uh, this problem was on the 2019 IMO shortlist. Uh, so as many of you know, the 2020 International Math Olympiad happened fairly recently. Uh, it was virtual this year. And just as they released the problems that were on the contest this year, they released the problems that were candidates for the contest last year. So this was one of those candidate problems. Uh, it was second on the list, so um, supposedly one of the easier geometry problems. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm going to go over the solution. So we have an acute triangle ABC. Uh, D, E, and F are the three feet of the perpendiculars. Uh, omega B and omega C are the inner circles of triangle BDF and triangle CED. And the tangents to the two circles um, at D, F, and D, E uh, meet, meet the circles at M and N. And then we draw the line M, N, and it meets uh, the two circles at P and Q as shown. And we want to show that M, P is equal to N, Q. So most of the simpler solutions that I saw to this problem on the forum uh, use trigonometry. Uh, but as you guys probably know, I don't. I try to avoid using trigonometry on my channel. And so here I'm going to show you a very nice uh, purely synthetic solution. And this is actually the second synthetic solution I came up with. So the first one I came up with was even more complicated and more involved than this. But I feel like this one is, is probably cleaner and more instructive. All right. So we want to show that MP is equal to NQ. Um, so one way to do this is if we take the midpoint of MN, uh, so I'm going to call that K, this proving MP equals NQ, it's the same as showing that K has the same power with respect to both circles. Because if that were true, then we'd have KN times KQ is equal to KM times KP. Uh, but KN and KM would, are equal because K is the midpoint. And so it's easy to see by symmetry that that would imply that MP is equal to NQ. All right, so we're, we're trying to show that K has the same power with respect to those two circles, omega B and omega C. And so that's the same as showing that K lies on the radical axis of the two circles. So how do we find the radical axis of those two circles? Well, one thing to note is that the midpoint of IJ has to lie on the radical axis. And I'll explain why. So if L is the midpoint of IJ, uh, LI and LJ are tangent to both circles, and the power of L with respect to them is LI squared and LJ squared, which are the same. So LI and L has the same power with respect to both circles, and so it lies on the radical axis. And also, we know that the radical axis of the two circles has to be perpendicular to GH. So basically, the radical axis is the perpendicular from L to the line GH, and we want to show that K lies on that line. So said another way, we want to show that KL is perpendicular to GH. So that's going to be my approach here. I want to show that KL is perpendicular to GH. All right. Now, if you look closely, um, I'm going to draw in a few more segments, but it turns out that the quadrilaterals DIGM and DJHN are similar. Uh, so I'm going to show a proof of that here. Um, so uh, first of all, these, these lines all intersect at the... Uh, I'm just going to draw in a few more lines. Um, so S is the orthocenter. That's where the three altitudes meet. Um, and it's, it's clear that these uh, two quadrilaterals are kites um, because di is equal to dm since the two tangents are equal, dn is equal to dj, and we have two right angles in each of them. Okay, so we have two kites, and it's a fairly simple angle chase to show that this angle mdi is equal to angle ndj. Uh, so I'm going to do that here. Um, so first I'm going to note that we have two cyclic quadrilaterals. So SFBD is cyclic since uh, angle SDB is 90 degrees and angle SFB is 90 degrees. And the same is true with uh, quadrilateral SCCD. That's also cyclic for the same reason. Okay, so BFSD 
and CESD are both cyclic. And so now I'm going to do the angle chase that I mentioned. So angle MDI, it's equal to angle FDB, and that's equal to angle FSB um, because BFSD is cyclic. And angle FSB is equal to angle ESC, and angle ESC is equal to angle EDC, and angle EDC is equal to angle NDJ. So this is something I kind of just recognized from seeing it many times before, but this is the formal proof of it. So angle MDI is equal to angle NDJ. And we also have DI is equal to DM. So I'm gonna write out a few more facts. Uh, DJ is equal to DN. And, we, and both these two kites, um, they have two right angles. So it's pretty clear from that that these two quadrilaterals have to be similar. Um, okay. So DIGM is similar to DHDJHN. All right. And since they're both kites, O is the midpoint of IM and R is the midpoint of NJ. All right. So where do we go from here? So I so one other thing to note first. Um, so we want to show we wanted to show that KL is uh, perpendicular to GH as I mentioned before, but we can show that GH is parallel to OR. Um, that's fairly clear because since the two kites are similar, uh, the ratio of corresponding parts has to be the same. So that means that DO over OG has to equal DR over RH. So I'm going to write that out. Um, okay, so we have DO over OG. Uh, that's the ratio of these two uh, parts of this diagonal, or, or that's the ratio at which one diagonal cuts the other diagonal. And that has to be the same in, in the other kite. So that has to also equal DR over RH in this kite. And so since those two ratios are the same, uh, by Thales theorem, GH has to be parallel to OR. Okay. Uh, so where do we go from here? Uh, so whenever I see lots of midpoints like this, I try to use the gliding principle. Uh, so I've done this in some of my previous videos, and I'm going to, in the description of my video, I'm going to give a link to an article on the gliding principle. But it's super nifty. It says if you have two similar triangles that are oriented the same way, and you take the midpoints between the connectors of their vertices, then that forms another triangle that's similar to both. Okay, so for example, we have triangle MGI is similar to triangle NHJ. Um, the problem is they're not oriented the way we want. So um, it's almost like this triangle is kind of like a reflection of this triangle. And for the gliding principle, we need them to be oriented the same way. Um, so technically, um, technically there is a way to consider them as being oriented the same because if you rotate this triangle enough, you will get to this triangle. Uh, but that won't be my approach here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect H over NJ um, to get point H prime. Okay, so H prime is the reflection of H over NJ. And it's fairly easy to see that a triangle MGI, uh, since it's similar to triangle NHJ, because the whole quadrilaterals are similar, it's also similar to triangle NH prime J. And, and from here, it's easier to use the gliding principle. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, but we have triangles MGI and NH prime J are similar. So I'm going to write this out. So MGI, it's similar to NHJ, which is congruent to NH prime J. So for these two outer triangles, MGI and NH prime J, I'm going to take the midpoints of the segments connecting their corresponding vertices. Um, so M corresponds to point N, and the midpoint of MN is K. And then I corresponds to J in these two similar triangles. And the midpoint of IJ is L, which we def by definition. And so then the only other midpoint, it's the midpoint of G and H prime. So what is the midpoint of G and H prime? Well, we at least know um, these, so lines OR and GH are parallel, as I mentioned before. 
So if we draw in GH prime, um, if we draw, so I'm going to just first draw it, but if we draw in GH prime, since H prime R is equal to HR, and those two lines are parallel, uh, the midpoint of GH prime, uh, which I'm going to call T, has to lie on OR, right? Because that would mean that TR is a mid-segment in the triangle GHH prime. So T, which T's, which is the midpoint of GH prime, has to lie on OR. And that'll be very convenient. So that's the third midpoint that we wanted in using the gliding principle. Okay. So I'm going to just write out these three midpoints. So K is the midpoint of MN. Uh, T is the midpoint of GH prime. And L is the midpoint of IJ. So those are the midpoints of the corresponding vertices in these two similar triangles, MGI and NH prime J. And so the triangle formed by all three, so that's triangle KTL, has to be similar to both those triangles. So, so by the gliding principle, triangle KTL is similar to both triangle MGI and NH prime J. So I'm going to draw in that triangle KTL. So in particular, it also has to be uh, an isosceles triangle. And not only that, we can also use the gliding principle. So, so O is the midpoint of the base of triangle GMI, and R is the midpoint of the base of triangle H prime and J. So if we take the midpoint of those two, that point, which I'm going to call U, has to be the midpoint of KL in the triangle KTL. So the midpoint U of OR is also the midpoint of KL. And so now we're getting somewhere. We wanted to show that KL was perpendicular to GH. Uh, we can show now that KL is perpendicular to OR. And, and that's because angle TUK has to be the same as angle GOM or angle H prime RN, which is 90 degrees. So angle TUK is 90 degrees. And so that means that OR is perpendicular to KL. And since OR is parallel to GH, that means GH has to be perpendicular to KL. And now we're getting exactly where we want um, because we said L is on the radical axis of the two circles. So I'm gonna write that out. But since LK is perpendicular to GH, that's the line joining the two centers of the circles, then KL is the radical axis, okay? So this is what I mentioned before, since Li squared is equal to Lj squared, uh, since L is the midpoint, uh, it has the same power with respect to the two circles, so it lies on the radical axis of them. And then, since KL is perpendicular to GH, um, well, GH is the line connecting the two centers, and the radical axis is always perpendicular to that. So KL is the radical axis of those two circles, and so K has to lie on the radical axis, so it has the same power with respect to both circles. And that's exactly what we wanted to show. Um, because if K has the same power with respect to both circles, that means that Km times Kq is equal to Km times Kp. And then, but Kn is equal to Km, because um, K is the midpoint of Mn. That's, that's why we created point K in the first place. So since Kn is equal to Km, that means that Kq is equal to Kp. And from there, it's easy to see that MP has to equal NQ um, by symmetry since KN is equal to KM. So I'm going to write this out, but all we have to do is a subtraction. So MP, well, that's KP minus KM. And KP, uh, we just showed, is the same as KQ. So that's KQ minus KN because uh, KM is equal to KN, and that's just NQ. So this is a, a fairly clever synthetic solution. Um, like I mentioned, there were easy or trigonometric solutions, but I just sort of try to avoid uh, trigonometry at all costs on my channel. So even though this isn't uh, a simpler solution, maybe it's a more insightful solution. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.